We begin this morning with the politically charged opening of the Winter Olympics in Beijing. The Chinese capital is the first city to host both the summer and winter games. During the opening ceremonies, the cauldron was lit by a Chinese skier who was part of China's Uyghur Muslim minority. China's government has been condemned for its treatment of Uyghurs. An estimated one million are being held in mass internment camps. While many Western leaders are boycotting the games, Russian President Vladimir Putin met privately with China's Xi Jinping. The two emerged from the meeting by sending a message to the West. Their joint statement saying that China and Russia's alliance has no limits. Jamie Yukis is covering the Winter Games in Beijing. Jamie, good morning. Good morning. Nearly every Olympic sport saw action today and the first medals now awarded. Norway's Therese Johag won the women's ski-a-thon. The games officially were opened and dedicated here at the National Stadium, also known as the Bird's Nest, in a captivating and controversial ceremony. Pageantry on display, but far from a full house due to COVID restrictions, the 24th Winter Olympic Games are now open. Athletes from 90 different countries and territories marched through China's National Stadium on a cold and blustery night. Leading the way for Team USA's 224 competitors, curler John Schuster. In his fifth Olympic appearance, he was chosen, along with speed skater Brittany Bow, to be America's flag bearer. John, have to ask, what was last night like? As an athlete, being, I guess, uh, chosen to carry your flag of your country to lead your delegation into an opening ceremonies is um, kind of the ultimate. And capturing that ultimate moment was curler Becca Hamilton, her brother Matt, one of John's teammates. I don't know if she realized it when she took it. Kind of felt very fitting that John was up there and the four of his teammates behind linked arm in arm just had his back. Bobsledder Alana Myers-Taylor was supposed to handle the honors, but was forced into isolation, isolation yes, by a positive COVID case. test. Look, we spoke to her before the ceremony. We've been, we've been on the road since November 10th and never came back to the U.S. for fear of catching COVID. So to get it here, it was pretty devastating. The pandemic and politics have become a backdrop for these games. With Chinese President Xi Jinping looking on, an athlete from China's marginalized Uyghur community lit the cauldron. While many saw it as a response to criticism of China's human rights record, an Olympic spokesperson says the skier was not chosen based on her ethnic background. This is an athlete who is competing here. She's competing, as I say, I think this morning. She has every right, wherever she comes from, whatever her background, to compete. And she has every right, whatever her background, wherever she comes from, to take part in the opening ceremony. This after she's meeting with Russia's Vladimir Putin, in which the two leaders appeared to cement their country's relations and stand in opposition to the U.S. and Western interests. They're not allies, they're even closer. Stephen Lee Myers is Beijing bureau chief for The New York Times. I think I think that they've telegraphed um, both leaders a desire to assert for their own countries a place on the world stage uh, that challenges the dominance of the United States uh, and the West. The women's hockey team is about to face off against the Russians and USA mixed doubles curling beat China and is now in position to make it to the medal round next week. The figure skating team event resumes tomorrow with the USA team leading after the first round. Data? A red, white and blue. Jamie, thank you.